Good morning and uh, welcome to our third session of uh, what uh, we're now causing, calling the uh, Virtual Symposium uh, Series, uh, bringing you a variety of different topics that you might normally see at a plenary session uh, when we do have a symposium. Uh, today's topic is about the Chinfo's emerging media and about a month or so ago uh, I was fortunate enough to sit in on a brief uh, that uh, they did for the Admiral uh, on the emerging media and uh, I thought that you know with a lot of developments uh, that are happening and some, uh, some very great material that uh, this would be a superb topic for uh, one of these sessions. So I would uh, like you to uh, please sit back, enjoy, ask plenty of questions and uh, Jason Kelly and Sandy Gall from Chinfo OI2 will tell you all about U.S. Navy Emerging Media. Thank you guys for your time. Um, just want to know right up front if you guys have any questions, please raise your hand. We'll take them throughout. Um, we're here really to talk to you guys some more today about how we can better align Navy messaging um, through our social media channels and how we really try to create the network effect here at Chinfo. Um, when we say emerging media, it's really part of a larger family. We get content from the fleet, um, different various kinds, and we want to talk to you about how we apply that in the social environment, as well as give you guys hopefully some best practices to keep in your back pocket, um, to take back with you, to use throughout the fleet, and engage and inform your audiences um, that, that will apply throughout all of your channels as well. Social media today is just impressive by itself. If you look at the amount the numbers rather is no longer a fad where we're trying to decide whether or not is social media going to be here and is it a communication tool and that's important to remember it needs to be a communication tool and you're not building a social media plan it needs to be a part of a larger picture if you look in these numbers are last year from the Nielsen report 2.27 billion people online 152 million blogs on the internet interestingly enough one in three bloggers are moms and then if you switch over to every minute on the internet each day, 100,000 tweets are sent, 48 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube, and then 571 websites are created just every minute. So the amount of information that's out there is increasing each year, and as we progress this year, these numbers can only be expected to increase again. So it's no longer a question of why are we doing this, but how can we leverage it and make it work better for the fleet and ourselves here at Chimpo. Yeah, I mean, I would say just to follow on, the structure and the climate of communications, more so than any other, other industry, um, has really changed, transformed in the last 10 years. If you look at the statistics, 91% of people own a mobile phone, smartphone in America. Um, the way that they're getting their news and their information now, um, especially the news, is surpassed radio and print, and it's getting very, very close to TV. So, you know, people aren't engaged all the time. I, you don't have to... We don't have to sit here and tell you go to any restaurant and see how many people are looking down. Um, so that's something to keep in your back pocket. These numbers, these change, the climate and environment changes. Um, so staying abreast, knowing the new trends, knowing the new technologies is something that Jason and I um, are well equipped to do and that's what we're here for. So again, any questions from the fleet, um, any, you know, trying to understand this new posture of communication um, is absolutely something that we can help you and, and provide. And as we go through this, if you have any questions, we want this to be more of a discussion than just us up here spewing information. So we encourage you to stop us and ask us for a little better explanation of what's going on. And then that brings us to our next slide right here. And that's where we're gonna talk about the evolution of Navy social media. And we wanted to start off with first, a little true or false here to get everyone involved. So first off, if I build it, my command social media presence, will they come? Sure. No. No? No. I like to tell people this isn't a field of dreams. Um, it's not one of those things that, okay, I created a Navy Facebook, or, you know, I created a Fleet Command Facebook page, cool, done, can't wait to start communicating. It doesn't really work like that. You still have to use those other channels that we've created that are trusted and true within the Navy. Let people know that they're there. Um, when your Fleet Commander is giving an interview or when you're talking to um, news media, let them know, hey, you know, we're keeping our, our um, command sites updated, please check out for more information. We have often links to um, additional um, tidbits and, and facts. So it's not something that once you create it, it's done and it's just going to, you know, blow up. And I think that's a common misconception that we hear. We get um, phone calls all the time. I created this blog two months ago. I'm not getting a lot of traction. These things take time. You have to, you're creating a brand new trusted platform. Um, so think about it. It's a new newspaper. 
um, if, we're, if we're talking years ago. It's in a newspaper, it's going to take a while to get that subscription um, up. So next up, as PA professionals, we should create a social media plan. What do we think, true or false? We already answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> Integrated. <laughs> false. Uh, we get that all the time as well. People call and say, hey, I need a um, template for our social media plan. And my response always is, we don't have one. You have a communications plan. This is just another tool in your toolbox. Um, it's just like a Navy.mil story. It's the same as an interview. You know, you have to be aware of it and know about it, um, get smart on the best practices of it, but creating a standalone social media plan that's not incorporated with your overall goals is not something that we suggest. Next up, Big Navy wants to share command specific content on their platform. What do you think? True or false? False. False? True. It depends. It depends, actually. <laughs> there, there you go. That's a better answer. Um, we do. We, we, we constantly look for fleet um, information and content, whether it be videos or pictures, um, to share on Big Navy's platform. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about It Depends later um, when we talk about our own specific uh, Big Navy social media goals. But um, absolutely, you know, just because you produce something, we want to create that network effect. You know, you share it, you share once, share many. Um, so we want to help get your story out as well. Finally, you can post identical content throughout all of your social media platforms. True or false? Well, you can, but you shouldn't. Good point. Good. Yes, you can, but it's not something that we recommend you do. Um, and we see this a lot as well, that you know, there's, there's um, platforms and technology out there that will take your tweets and Facebook and feed them into one. Um, we don't recommend doing that. You should have a unique voice. Again, this is just like any other communications tool. Um, you wouldn't say the same thing in print as you would in an interview. Um, so just keep that in mind. And I like to describe it as each social media platform has its own style of writing like you would for school versus writing for the military. So you're reaching a different audience for a different purpose. So Twitter, you only have so many characters. Facebook, you can write until your heart's content anymore. So again, you can post it again and again and again, but you're trying to reach different audience. And they're on there for a different reason. So we'll talk about that coming up in a little bit. And we just want to go over, again, we didn't, um, there's phases to this, and I think that that's not something, again, that, that if you build it, it will come mentality. Um, here at, at the Navy and through a big Navy account, we've really created, um, you know, we've been able to look at our, our presence and our adoption and, and kind of break that out into how did we get here? Um, here's where we are today, but here's where we started. And phase one really was that create the presence um, determine goals and objectives and incorporate into your communication plan. So that's, you know, when the, um, I think, was it Haiti that we started? Yeah, when, um, when the hurricanes in Haiti struck is when we launched our Facebook page and went live. And so that was really that, you know, the go button for that. And then throughout these other phases, we, you know, we focus more on, okay, so we've created the site, we have it, it's legitimate, it's registered, it's, um, it meets all those uh, government requirements. And then we went through adoption and education and training. So we, we worked on getting people there, making sure people were aware that we were on Facebook. Um, and then education and training ourselves, the fleet, people using it, our fans. Um, phase three was really uh, growth and analytics. So we, we, we applied some of these built-in analytics within the tools that we'll, we'll talk a little bit about later um, to see, okay, what's the best times to post? What's the types of content our fans are really eating up? Um, and then right now we're in this really phase Four, which is this authoritative and timely source. We want people to go there first and, and looking at trends and knowing that most people get their news now from their mobile devices and through social media. Um, that's where we have to go. And then we're looking at fan engagement. So social, it's two ways. Instead of just pushing content, we're really um, hoping to get fan engagement and feedback. And, and, um, and we'll talk more about how we're doing that now. I have a question, Sandy. Yes. Okay, so so what you were saying about phase one, that that's how you guys did it. but. Wouldn't you recommend that you should determine your goals and objectives before you create a presence now, so that well, you yeah. can determine which that, that you're hitting the right platform? That's or, true. I think you're right. We probably should switch those bullets around. Thank you. So what we want to talk about here is that what we do on social media, we don't work in a vacuum, just like any other communication professional. So while Chinfo has many different organizations here within headquarters, we work most closely with the news desk and the strategy shop on almost a daily basis. And within OI2, we have operations, we have video, we have Navy.mil, um, ourselves, emerging media, 
um, our DMA liaison, and then systems and engineering, where we really combined everything into what you see online. Um, and then, it, like Sandy mentioned, that creates the network effect. So we realize not everyone out there in the fleet has this type of organization, but it kind of gives you the mindset of how can I leverage the assets that I already have to really take the content that's out there and then build it and really cross promote it. Um, and then we'll talk about it a little bit more, but to kind of give you an introduction here, a lot of times we focus on um, Chimco priorities for communication. So that may be CENTCOM or PACOM or um, the health of the force. So um, that's where we really do the strategy in the building and that's with the work. And it's been one of our priorities to develop a relationship with the news desk as well as with the strategy shop. So we're in line with communication. Jason mentioned a little bit more about our communications goals. We just wanted to let you guys know in the fleet, I think oftentimes when they submit content and, and we don't use it or we do use it, the question is why was that picked up? Um, we like to align them to CI priorities, operations and CENTCOM and PACOM. We want to talk about the pivot to the Pacific. We want to talk about our missions um, in CENTCOM. Health of force, that deals mostly with um, sailor, sailor benefits, sailor retention. If we're looking at um, C&P things, we want to we want to tell the sailor story. So we're trying to communicate more in that direction as well. And then history and heritage, um, and a couple reasons for that. Uh, they're so ingrained in what we do every single day, and I think that the American public should know and understand that. Um, but also, it works really well on social media. People really like, um, it's very shareable content. So that's some of our big wins. Is it operations in CENTCOM or operations in Fifth Fleet that you're more focused on? Um, CENTCOM, but right now we get a lot of information from Fifth Fleet, but we would like to expand that, expand that. So, and these are very deter are, um, determined based on the content that we get at the time. Um, so what's going on in the news and they shift and, and priorities do change. Did that answer your question? Well, it just seems to me that, that you know, if you're looking for Navy information, you know, and, and I know we still have some some Navy fog out there, but it seems to me it's not really CENTCOM, it's more of the fifth fleet AOR that you're that you're probably focusing on. And when we look at that, it's at least for their Facebook page, they're tied together. So when we look for fifth fleet, it's a combined effort. So yeah. fifth fleet and the CENTCOM Or maybe NAV Cent. I you know, I'm just taking it out of that that joint arena, if you will. Again, based on, on what you're saying, the timely source for Navy information. So. Um, one big win we had recently, um, and the tweet is up here, uh, the announcement that the X-47B landed successfully was made on Twitter, and it came from the SecNav's account. So it wasn't a Navy.mil story that was released and was posted. It was a tweet that was sent out and got retweeted by the media out there, and got embedded in blogs, got picked up and reported on, and it was 140 characters that made news. And I think was that, that, was that planned that way? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So I think um, that speaks to the most uh, authoritative and timely source of information, and I think it also talks to how we do operate without and out on the outside of these priorities. So you'll see most of our content deals with this. However, um, you know we're not gonna shy away from a breaking news story. Um, so that's just, that's one way where we do that. And to give you some insight into how that was planned, um, SecNav's office had written some tweets and asked us um, to please send those when we tell you from the ship, uh, knowing that they wouldn't have the ability to tweet from the ship. So um, I got a couple emails say send tweet one, send tweet two, send tweet three. So it was a matter of coordination between the offices and realizing that there were some limitations on technology and just a 10 minute phone call overcame them. So. Yeah, so there, there, are, there are workarounds and, and we broke the story before anybody else, you know, before Navy Times, before um, the Wall Street Journal. Um, we were there and did that because of that coordination and that pre-planning. Um, I think this also speaks to, like he said, there, we didn't wait for the Navy.mil story and I think um, Admiral Kirby, I don't know if it was two weeks ago or last week, sent um, a PA announcement out talking about the share first mentality. Um, so consider that. If you don't have the link back, you can easily say more to come, more to follow. Um, and that's what we did within, um, I think within two minutes of this tweet, uh, we were able to
to get the Navy.mil story up, make it live, and then link to that as well. Is that? I'm going to say this and I would probably not table it because it could be a huge con conversation. Is there any challenges to our ethics or the way that we did SECNAV's plea? Challenges to ethics? Meaning, you see at SECNAV, well, what, just how what you does the public expect? So just you as know? you addressed a draft of press release, it, I mean, it's the same, again, the same rules apply. Anything had changed, they would call, we would make that. Um, and make those updates, but we had something, you know, pre-approved, ready to go. That was that was blessed by all authorities. Um, now, and that's why we had that 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 conversation in sidebar. So I think that's an excellent question. Um, obviously, you don't want to, you know, draft it and then walk away from something like that. Um, you do need that that one-to-one -one conversation that says, yes, this is true. And, you know, what we drafted before um, worked, and we can go ahead and, and descend. And Bruce, your yeah, point is wondering if it's. If your question Different is though, than a press release. that yeah, it came from the SecNav's account and it was drafted on someone else's behalf, I think the question goes back to does the SecNav write all of his speeches? Uh, no, but I think there's I think there's a difference. Talk about it, like, I mean because social media is different. Yes, I, I liken this to like getting an approved quote. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The principal has read it and approved it. Yep, go with that at the appropriate time. It's just a different venue. And these tweets came from his public affairs office, so it was PAO to PAO coordination. Yeah, and I think sometimes we often get, you know, we can't do this because we have these limitations. So this was just a really good example of, yes, we have those limitations and we are able to work around it. I think the other issue, or along those lines, Bruce, is, is um, you, know, you, you look at other public figures that tweet, and and it's clear Hillary Clinton's a perfect example where where you know some of the debate was was it really Hillary writing those tweets or somebody writing those for? Um, and I don't think there was any question of the credibility, and I think that's kind of what you're getting at is that somebody else is sending it, and you know technologically he can't he couldn't have done it from C, and so. The, the ethical question is, okay, he really didn't send it, it was done. But I think you're getting wrapped up around the axle here on the fact of who pushed the send button here. That if you look how the president does it in the White House, when the president actually sends a tweet, he signs it. He signs BO, or the first lady signs an initial there. And that's how people at that level, when they want to send a tweet on their behalf, do it. Because I think people realize the Secretary of the Navy and other high figures don't have the ability to be out there tweeting on their own all day. So th yeah, I think this is a great, and you know, this is an example of something we could definitely discuss more later. Do you have another question? I'm assuming that you had prepared tweets for the successful um, mission, mm -hmm. but I'd like to know what the contingency plan was if things hadn't gone off successfully. And were there going to be tweets that were going out on that as well? or any Absolutely. Other and that's something, you know, you have to be open and honest. When you start a platform like this, and we'll talk about it a little bit more, you can't shy away from, you know, the possible negative or the possible points of contention. Um, so absolutely. And that's that's why we set up that phone call, because we needed to know if this weren't, you know, this huge success that it was, what then do we send? So I think that's a, that's a great question. Thank you. Yes? Thank you guys for the second half of for big Navy to send this out. Can we also work with you at the lower echelon command in the sense of, hey, we're breaking this information, we're gonna put it out, yep. or should we put it out, or ask you guys to push it first, or how does that work? So the question was, we work with Segnav, um, he's obviously a principal within the Navy, can we work with other commands to do sort of a similar thing? And the question, absolutely, <coughs> yes. We are here to support and have that conversation as, when is it appropriate to come from big Navy, and when is it appropriate to come from from you guys, and then we'll retweet, and we'll talk about more when we get to Twitter for that. Thank you. So our, our objectives, Sandy mentioned breaking Navy news, um, also increasing awareness of our operations, Navy initiatives, um, focusing on our history and heritage. It's one of our most popular things we do on social media. And when I came here, I thought, why are we doing this? But it gives people a sense of community and pride in what they have in common with us. 
um, and then better integrate ourselves into other Chinco and Navy DMA functions, as well as synchronization across uh, the fleet with our messaging. And that's one thing that we want to build on um, within ourselves professionally with the social media out there for the fleet is, okay, these are our priorities and we want to make sure that when you send us content, we're able to share it as long as it aligns with it. If not, then how can we better focus on it? Yeah, and, and oftentimes when we get calls um, from the fleet, hey, I want to start, uh, you know, my principal wants to start a, a Twitter account, or we want to start a um, Facebook page. These are absolutely the questions that we're going to ask you right off the bat. Um, and, and then from that, we'll develop that strategy and that plan and then create that presence. So our key stakeholders, um, the media, uh, mainstream, um, and local local media, as well as the American public in these cities, Washington, San Diego, Norfolk, and Jacksonville, and then public affairs officers, sailors, families, and veterans. We find on the big Navy presence that uh, we don't get a lot of sailors. Um, it's mainly one-offs and people who have an interest in the Navy. So uh, family members, veterans, or people that just love the Navy and want to be our biggest cheerleaders. So we're able to leverage that, and then you'll notice sometimes when we communicate, um, especially in how we write something or position it, it's written differently than it would be for an internal audience, because we're trying to reach people who may not know everything about the Navy, but want to be educated about it and what we're doing. And we're able to track these, um, looking at our platforms um, for the analytics that are built in, and then, and then also just us being on them all the time and looking to see you know, what is the saturation of each of these? And it's different um, for Facebook than it is for Twitter, than it is for Pinterest, than it is um, for YouTube. And, and that's something that we really would like to ask you, you know, the commands and the fleets out there that have this presence, you know, what is your key audience? And, and most likely it won't be this. And if it's not, that's fine. Uh, but then we need to create the strategy to meet those, those audience needs. So where are we? Well, we're on the big platforms uh, and the most popular ones right now. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Flickr, uh, Pinterest, Navy Live, which is our blog, and Google Plus. On a weekly average, we reach uh, more than two million people through social media alone. And if you look at some newspaper distribution, that's just dwarfing the uh, distribution of a newspaper. Um, and then if you look here, you can see that um, some of the larger ones, um, you might be surprised. With the uh, Pinterest, it's Sandy can speak to this specifically, but it's one of the fastest growing platforms out there. And the way that we're using it is different from the other ones out there um, compared to Twitter, rather Twitter or YouTube. Hey, Jason. Yes. Google Plus has been around for, what, four or five years or longer? About that time. Uh, yeah. I mean, your numbers are, your numbers reflect how I feel about Google Plus. So. so and we, we have slides for Google Plus to talk about. And each of these offers some unique, unique sure. platform and unique capability. Who, um, who do you think are the Google Plus? Who is that audience? People on Google Plus, the easiest way to say it is that they're people that want to be part of a knowledge community. When you're on Facebook, you're on Facebook to be on Facebook with your friends or your family. People on Google Plus are on there to learn about something else. So um, we'll show you some ways that uh, people are using it and we're using it, but they're not really out there to share pictures of their child's baby. Um, so the adoption rate on that is a little bit different, but the way that it's being used is also completely different too. Okay. Is it, um, also, is it also true that um, for sites like Google Plus, I mean, I think that Google recently changed some of its algorithms so they're weighting social media more heavily, so it could be that a search engine like Google starts paying more attention to Google Plus as a and it, way we'll to talk its about results. that. It's definitely for, we're on it right now, specifically for search engine optimization yeah. and some of those unique capabilities that it offers. Um, but we do see growth, uh, and, and to be honest, yeah, we've been on it for a while, but we've just really started putting effort towards growing our community. Again, this is, we're kind of in the phase one of Google yeah, Plus, if you look back yeah. to that slide. Um, and so that's why that number is so low. But I do think it'll grow, and I do think um, so long as we tailor our messages and tailor our content to meet those needs, um, we'll see we'll see a big a big jump in that in the future. And that's a common question. For example, Vine came out where it's uh, like Twitter video. Um, why aren't we on there? Well, it's not really one of our capabilities that we want to focus on right now. 
because it's not something that we want to put the manpower in right now because we're focusing on these for a specific reason. Would that extend to Instagram too, or are you guys exploring possibly? We, we, all, we often explore those things. I think right now, uh, and this is something that everyone will have to juggle, is manpower, capability, and, and just what can we do on each platform and the impact of each of those. What so was I know that question? Instagram just, uh, we just signed, GSA just signed, um, gov user agreements with them so that's something that we will consider in the future but but right now as far as what we can do and what we can do well that's something that we really want to keep in mind the can question, you repeat her question the question oh, is sorry. are we considering instagram right now oh, okay would you encourage us to explore instagram if you guys are at that point yet i think with the user agreements that are there and now that they're set a, a month ago i probably would have told you no yeah um, however, I think that that's definitely a conversation we can have to see, you know, how can it, how are you guys using it, and then can we learn from that leveraging as well? Because it's definitely a two-way. I mean, absolutely, there are things that are happening in the fleet that Jason and I see all the time and think, wow, great idea, we're going to do that now too. And the one thing I would caution with Instagram is that uh, just remember that the same rules for imagery alteration apply. So, so you can no filter. Right. Sure. So um, you can use it, but you don't want to be manipulating photography to the point where it's unrealistic. Oh, and one more thing before we leave the slide, sorry. It's something to think about. Um, like we said, our reach is, you know, 2.6 million this week. Um, <clears throat> and, that, and that does ebb and wane as, you know, holidays come up and things. Um, think about this. Next time that you're you're interested in, you know, going to an outsource outside media and, and giving an article, um, think about the Navy Live blog. Think about how you could be sharing it on our Facebook account and reach a, you know, a much broader audience with your very defined, specific messages. Um, and that's something that we want to keep in mind and let the fleet know that like, this number is so high um, to use it. Yes. Before we move off, uh, well, okay, that that graphic is cool. With the social media registry, you know, we have defined platforms, and I, I don't think we've really changed them that much since we initiated it. Um, for the folks who maybe are experimenting with Vine and Instagram and other social media things, do you guys track who's dabbling in what outside of the? Social media registry? Outside of the registry, no. Other than just ancillary paying attention to those things, not, we don't have a, a database to track that right now. And we are working actively with DMA to update the registry mm -hmm. to add on those that have approved uh, GSA agreements. Mm -hmm. For example, okay. um, everything past the four that are already on there. So I think we've already touched a lot of, on a lot of these points here, but we just wanted to show you um, how we create a network effect with their own school <coughs> properties. Um, you'll see Navy Live as the center. I always tell people that's really the marriage of all of this content and all of our different platforms. So oftentimes, um, we want to push people to an authoritative source for more information, for further granularity, for more context. Um, and we're really doing that for Navy Live. So we'll post a picture on Pinterest, perhaps, and it links back automatically to Navy Live for us to, to again, grow that presence. Um, and this isn't the way everything works, but this is a, a typical thing, a best practice that we like to do. So speaking of Navy Live, what is a blog? A blog for us is written in first person. It's a someone's narrative. Um, it's about three to 500 words and it's timely. So it's not a Navy.mil story. Um, that's the big distinction between it. It's someone sharing a story, um, conversational, and it's keeping in mind that it has a different audience. For the blog, the audience, I think, is kind of twofold. Um, the media, and then again, those one-offs. Um, we frequently use the blog as an opportunity to put information out there, and then the media is able to report using that information um, specifically. Um, in a few seconds, you'll see X47 is an example of that. But uh, one opportunity that we recently had was uh, talking about LCS. Uh, and what we did here was, uh, not every blog needs to be based on text. So we crowdsourced questions from Facebook. We asked people, what do you want to know about LCS? If you could ask the CEO anything. Um, we got a lot of great questions, and then we worked with the news desk, and then sent them over to the ship. Uh, they worked with their MCs on board, and then they shot some videos. And then rather than posting 305 words of text, they had the ship CO out there answering questions. Yes, it was this, a big success. It's an opportunity for Commander Will to answer many of the questions that are in the trade press that are through 
um, you know, former Navy, retired Navy, Navy family that are that are getting a lot of stories on LCS, but he this is now his platform to give his true assessment of what's going on um, from fans. So again, that marriage of the properties, we, we crowdsource questions from Facebook, and then we put it within um, the Navy Live blog to provide that greater story. So, so did we see in the media after this was posted, did we see pickup of the quotes from these video clips and, and some of the written stories? Um, not in this particular one, but we have in the past. Um, they have linked to, because um, we've done this several times um, for the LCS and other platforms as well, um, that the media has picked up this and said, you know, per the Navy Live blog where he answered questions, so yes, we have seen that occur. What was the turnaround time from when you crowdsourced the questions staff through the desk, I, got it out there, and then got this up? Ideally, three to five days um, because of some technology issues with, the, because they chose video, um, getting the video off the ship, it was uh, much longer than we had anticipated it and would have liked to have seen. Um, so this is the first time that we tried video, so that was, you know, kind of a learning curve for us. Um, next time, we might just do text again because the text is, you know, that three to five turn, day turnaround is still fresh in people's minds. Obviously, it would be great if you could do it an hour or two hours, but... I think what we showed here is that it can be done, though. Right. That a topic as hot as LCS, we could tell the story in a different way. We did it multimedia, and we put a different face on it. We put the CEO's face on it and a sailor that's actually operating forward. And something else that we assess, because we have done the LCS several times, um, first time with the CO, but um, I was able to look at questions that we asked fans and the, um, the questions that we got from fans three months ago to this, and from six to three to this, and, and see how that conversation is changing. Absolutely. Um, you can see that the communications that we are we're, we're pushing out are definitely affecting the conversation. So they were much more positive. They were much more capability-based versus do you the other you know conversations that have been occurring um, so that's absolutely something that we can look to and see are, are we able to penetrate the conversation and have and is it changing in the eyes of our fans that was a huge win for us this is something new that we started and it's a uh, big win for us and I think we're equally as proud of it as RTC is um, each week we broadcast and live stream the group graduation straight from Great Lakes. It's a huge win, um, mainly because of this. It's letting people connect with their families that couldn't be there. Uh, the post says it all. So ha so unhappy when I couldn't be there for graduation, but the online streaming is the truly next best thing. Congratulations to all of the graduates today. Well, and that's, um, if you think of health of course, that absolutely ties into, you know, telling that sailor story and that letting people feel like they're connected. So with the uh, example of the X-47, uh, we see here where NBC News reported using one of our blog posts, linking directly back to it um, and pulling information from the blog that we posted um, immediately before the X-47B on the day prior to it. And then I, uh, another blog that we did, um, picking up on the controversy on whether or not Captain Crunch was actually a captain. It was kind of joining a larger conversation and then tying back to um, some Navy facts and then bringing LCS into the fold there with the photo. That wasn't exactly aligned to our communication message, but it was an opportunity for us to tell a story and we were already interjected into the conversation. So um, to capitalize on that. And, and something to be aware of uh, with the the LCS, don't be, a, we, we try new things all the time. Um, we, we experiment and see how these things work and, and the video is a prime example of that with the LCS. Um, so it's, it's a new platform, you know, new ideas are welcomed. Next up, Twitter. Um, and again, we see here with the Captain Crunch, our tweet was, can confirm real Captain Crunch appears to wear U.S. Navy commander rank, no real record of service, Crunch credibility. So it's joining a larger conversation that's happening and then leveraging that bring ourselves into it. So let's talk some best practices here. We use this, when you see an at symbol, this is a handle, that's someone's actual profile, in this case it's the real conversations. Um, this is the hashtag that we're using for US Navy, so we're able to track all conversations that are occurring about US Navy with people using that. Um, and then this crunch credibility, this isn't something that we just made up. Um, there's various ways, Twitter has a, a pretty robust search. <clears throat> there's also Topsy, which is a free, um, 
capability you can use to say, okay, if I'm creating a hashtag, let's not just make it out of thin air. A, does anyone else already own it? Um, and B, uh, what's being said about it? And then C, you know, can we track it afterwards? So this isn't just a, a fad thing, really cool to do. We're able to um, tag that content, anything that anyone that uses that hashtag, and then you know, there we have the full story of it. So it's creating this metadata that we can go back and research. Sandy mentioned um, tweeting first and then following up with additional information. So after the first tweet went out about X47B, we followed it up with the link to the Navy.mil story and then told everyone that photos and video would follow. And one of the people that wanted to know about that was the media. So those that were out there waiting for it knew that we would be sending out additional content that would be arriving later on. And then you can see here, and next slide. Um, Twitter really lets us be our rapid reactionary force. Um, Jason and I are constantly on it, the team is constantly on it, looking for Navy information, tracking the Navy conversation. Um, and oftentimes we can um, uh, negate false information. Um, and another thing, you know, your social media job isn't nine to five. Um, there's been often times where I've seen something go out, I think the most recently one about um, a SEAL Team 6 person was killed or something like that and it was just trending all over Twitter. Um, we were able to call the news desk and confirm or deny and obviously it was false and tweet that out and say, you know, hey guys, this isn't correct. It's, it's from the horse's mouth, it's not going on. If you could please retweet this and let everybody else know. Um, so interjecting ourselves in the conversation is really, really important, especially when there's misinformation about the Navy out there. Yes? So two questions about that, that tweet. MT, what does that stand for? Modified tweet. Okay, so there's different ways that you can um, retweet or you know further someone's message. Um, retweeting is just pretty much the quotes. It's the exact same. We haven't changed anything. Uh, modified tweet means we probably shortened this in order to include this URL. Mm -hmm. um, so we took Lieutenant Dempsey's tweet, who was out there, um, and, and made it um, be able to fit to that 100 Another thing, you have 140 characters, very rarely do you want to use them because you want people to retweet, you want people to add something beforehand and interject again that two-way conversation. Okay, can you talk a, a minute about shorteners too? Yep, so um, we use Hootsuite, but there's a very uh, there's a variety of different platforms that will take your URL and create this Owly. Um, there's also Bitly's, and we can talk more offline if anyone has conversations about that. Um, and what it enables you to do is track how many people clicked on that link. So we're able to really see, yes, we have like three retweets, but how much was it you know, clicked on? What was the saturation of that? It's a great question, thank you. We found that with some of the shortened links in the NMCI environment, some are well received and some are not. So Bitly, for instance, not so much. And I think that's a really great point. Um, that's what your key messages um, and your key audiences. I mean, for us, we're pretty open that we, we want to think externally, so for us it doesn't matter as much, but absolutely, if your key audience is internal, you're, you're just not going to be able to shorten that link. Then the question there was basically um, NMCI, how well it works with shorter links. Um, GSA offers one that works pretty much across the platform, so there, that one is available. Here it's important to remember Twitter isn't Facebook. Um, a lot of people choose to link their Twitter and Facebook together. Don't do it. Um, it's designed for two separate purposes, and not only that, you're going to get your message truncated off. And when I talked about you're trying to write for two separate platforms and two separate audiences, it's not happening here. So uh, if you want to focus on one thing and you only have time for one thing, then maybe it's just do Facebook. But if you can't do all of them, then it's time to prioritize and decide which one do we actually have time for. <clears throat> Next, we want to talk a little bit <clears throat> about Facebook, and I'm just going to go on a limb and say most people are, are very aware and, and are comfortable in the Facebook environment uh, for your personal presence. Um, something cool that we like to do is uh, we have a live Facebook uh, chat with Mick Pond. He heard, he held a digital all hands. Um, again, he said, I'm going to be available for 45 minutes during this time to this time. Um, and I want to take your questions about zeroing in on excellence. Um, and so it enables him, it's an opportunity for him to speak about his target messaging and what he wants to talk about. And also, I mean, he's a MCPON. He, his main um, uh, demographic is the sailors, and, and with that comes um, their families. So he was able to answer a lot of questions. I think he answered for 50 minutes. He reached 110,000 people with that. Um, 
and he had at his side, you know, five to six PAOs that were there and helping him draft his answer. I mean, when other, how else do you have that opportunity? It must have been back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. well, it was fun to watch. Um, it's another example of, uh, again, Facebook has integrated hashtags, so that's something that we want to use as well. Um, and then you'll see how we um, linked it back to our story. So that's another thing. Yes, we're having a post, but we're always trying to link it back to that authoritative source for people that want more context. So Google+, Plus, why are we on there? Uh, Sandy mentioned it's the search engine optimization, but it's really also the knowledge discovery. People are on there to learn more about things rather than really each other. Um, and one of the things that we have been doing are Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, we did one for the Battle on uh, the Midway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Battle um, of Midway um, 72nd commemoration. Um, and we also did one for the Monitor. So they've been history focused um, from now, but we have some lessons learned that we would like to incorporate for further Hangouts. Um, but if you want to go next slide, yeah. So what it enables us to do is you'll see here there's different um, image or different windows open here. We had a live panel at the Pentagon um, of three to four people that were able to speak on it. And then also we um, looped in remote participants as well. So he was actually at the Battle of Midway Museum, or Midway, USS Midway Museum, sorry. Um, and it's, it's a great opportunity. Again, what we did was open up the floor for fans to ask questions, um, and they answered them live right there. Do you know how many participants you had for that particular event? For the event, I think we had around 300 live, but then since we posted this, also this captures it and feeds it into our YouTube automatically. We've had over 2,500 people go to it since then. So, I mean, it was, it was a pretty, if you think like 300 people, it's not that many, but it captures it and it, it makes it available for other people, which is great. One of the tools that Google Plus has, they're called circles. And if you want to think about it, they're targeted messages. And for example, you see that, um, we have the photo up here of the X-47B. It lets you target it, and you can decide which groups really on Google Plus you want to group people into. And for example, we have them broken down by media, military, energy, information, Navy friends, information dominance. And these are circles that we've created, and we ask people if you want to join them, let us know, and then we drag them in there. So when we send out something that has to do with history and heritage, we target these messages to them, and then what they get is an email that says, we've shared something with you. So it's really sending that message to a targeted audience that maybe someone else may not want to know about as widely. And again, they, they subscribe to these themselves. So it's getting information that you want, um, really personalizing those messages. Hmm. So that's, that's a unique opportunity that Google Plus allows us that we don't get on any other platform. And that's really one of the areas of growth that we're leveraging is this ability to target content there. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Flickr mostly because this is a really great example of these platforms. Not only is the communication field changing, with that these platforms evolve, so you need to make sure you're on top of that. Um, recently, uh, Flickr has redesigned the way that they do images. Before, if you could remember, they were just um, one image on the page um, for each album that we had, but now it's just a stream of all of our images. When before we were uploading anywhere from 40 to 100 images a day, we kind of revamped that and said, okay, since it's a stream and we know people aren't gonna scroll that far, why don't we think more four to eight images and see how that affects our growth and our reach. And what we've seen is actually, uh, we've been doing it for two weeks and we've absolutely grown. Um, so this is a good example of having to be adaptable to the platform that you're using, um, but also less is sometimes more. Um, again, when we talk about targeted messages, we said, okay, if, we're, if these are the things we're gonna talk about, let's just put those images up. Um, and, and the really compelling stuff. And, and um, what you'll see is media takes from here, um, and, and there's a huge growth. I think we have over 63,000 um, people that go to this every week. So that's really great for us. YouTube also recently unveiled a new design, and its change is really focused on responsive design. So where before the desktop looked like the same thing on a mobile device, now it's kind of customized from the desktop to the tablet to your smartphone. So here it also allows us to target playlists and put up front the most recent content. So we're able to leverage what we also want to highlight uh, as our priority content as well. And just for an example of what's doing really well on uh, YouTube, our laser weapon system is, has the most views. I tell people all the time, if you could put a laser on anything, I'll take it. Um, just because the way that that story went huge everyone's interested in lasers, and, you know, can't imagine why. Um, but 
the X-47B uh, completes first carrier resident landing. This is one of our newer ones. So you can see that, um, you know, those really cool, very short videos are um, really what people want to see. We're interested most in um, not so much how many clicks in it gets. That's really, really important. But if you think, again, we're, we're more in that phase four of fan engagement, um, we're looking more as that dropout rate. So we're able to see when um, our fans or when viewers are dropping out. And then that way we can then inform the fleet, okay, your video, we had a great one, why I serve. Um, you know, please check it out when you can um, from the George Washington. And it was a, a minute 45, but we saw the, mid, the dropout rate was a minute 20, which is unfortunate because it was that last three seconds that said, you know, U.S. George Washington operating in PACOM. Um, so that, that message that we ended with was blocked to many of the people. Just if we had shortened it 20 seconds, we would have been able to count. Pinterest. I will let Sandy discuss this. Okay, so this is obviously um, a newer platform that we have, um, and a lot of people are asking why is the military on Pinterest. Um, if you look at the demographics, 70% of them are women, um, but also it, Pinterest has the highest click-through rates than any other platform out there. It also is the fastest growing platform. Um, I think a year ago it was a 90-10 split, so 90% of the people are women, so the, the male population is growing. Also on our other platforms, um, we're the Navy, it, we have a male-dominated followership or following. So um, this is really an opportunity to tap into a target audience that we just really aren't reaching um, through our other platforms. You can see here we have, you know, meet our fleet, these are all of our, um, our ships, so we're able to get information on that, and then we always link back to a dot mail, dot gov, um, or our blog website. Um, places we go, this is, you know, hey, we're globally deployed around the world. We're able to demonstrate that. Um, Navy ethos, when I first came aboard here a little over a year ago, we had a lot of instances of CO firing, a lot of news stories about, you know, why is the Navy having good leadership? How can we build better leaders? Um, so as a response to that, we were able to create this Navy ethos board, and in, in, within that, we put all of those really great sailor stories and stories and ethos. Um, obviously it's very um, visual oriented, so that's something that you want to make sure you have very compelling imagery. Um, you can see here that we have also women in the Navy, it's one of our, our largest um, boards, because the content that's shared most on Pinterest throughout the entire platform is um, like dogs, party planning, and food. So we have, you know, in order to meet those needs and, and to get that up, we also have, we have service animals. And we have, uh, I think, the flavor of the Navy is what we call it, and I can't find it right now, but we also have history and heritage. So if you look on Pinterest here, you can drop down, there's themes that you can attach to each of these boards. So is it a, um, is it like a wedding theme board, which we don't have, um, but, you know, history and technology boards, they have all of those buckets already created for you, again, to help you target your message um, to a specific audience. Um, and something to keep in mind is right now we're only linking to .mil.gov um, and .org sites, again, because of the GSA uh, user agreements that we sign in order to use Pinterest. And that's something that I think is a total separate conversation. But for people that have com or questions about that, um, absolutely contact Jason or I. But yeah, it's a really unique opportunity. We can go to the next slide. So you see this as being a great uh, vehicle to communicate with uh, Navy moms, mm -hmm. Navy spouses. Yep, Navy families. Um, and, and again, this click-through rate is highest. You're going to get more click-throughs um, you know, per visit on Pinterest than you will on Facebook or Twitter. So it's a good opportunity to get people back to your um, official sites. Also, on average, people spend an hour and a half on Pinterest every week. They spend 30 minutes on Facebook. So that's something to think about too. More opportunities for your things to get clicked, more opportunities for your content to be seen. Um, you'll look here that we, um, again, hashtags are used and we hashtag sailors. I mean, this is just a really fun picture of us in the fifth fleet. So it's really shareable and says, this is where the Navy is, this is where we're operating. Uh, Navy housing is also using Pinterest and mm -hmm. one of the ways that we're doing it is to introducing people to where they may be living. Um, and it's, yeah, it's an innovative way to show more plans and what a better platform to do it on than for families. So um, we thought that was a great example of a different way to use Pinterest as well. 
So we talk about best practices, and these aren't limited to just Facebook because we have a picture up here from Facebook. Um, everyone needs to be prepared to ask and answer the hard questions. And these tips are no different than anything else that you would learn at Dempos. Um, know and listen to your community uh, and your audience and post consistency, consistently rather. Um, we find that there's a lot of great content going out on a platform, and then all of a sudden there's a break. So you build up this trust, you search trust with your audience, and then there's nothing there. So you need to kind of keep the flow going to make sure that it's on an ongoing basis. Um, right, conversationally, I think this is something that, you know, being so ingrained in the Navy and so much in the culture, um, when I first started working, I was like, oh, I'll never talk like that. But within two months, you know, it's acronym this and acronym that. Um, but if, you're, if your audience is externally, you have to speak the way that they consume. Um, so, you know, remember your audience, remember it's social, have a conversation, you know, make, you know, be funny, give something there that shows some personality behind the person um, working the keyboard. Um, if you look at, you know, three lines of text is really ideal, you know, keep it, sh the, you know, oftentimes the shorter the better, and for each platform it's a little bit different, but, um, you know, we don't want two paragraphs on. If you're writing two paragraphs for every Facebook post, we might want to talk about creating a blog for you, um, because just different platforms and different, um, types of messages. Also, you want to include this call to action. Um, you, you can tell your fans what you want them to do. It's the same as any other communication rules. I don't think these are any different. Um, tagging is what you can do. You can see here that we tag the U.S. Navy Recruit Training Command um, because we want other people to know about our Navy uh, platforms and other portals and get more information. And hopefully they'll like that and go there and then that, again, create that network effect. Again, these are tips to remember, social, conversational, relatable, uh, responsive, timely, consistent, authentic, and honest. Um, photos, social media is a very visual media, but the thing to remember here is just because you have a Navy.mil caption, please don't just copy and paste it onto your Facebook page. Um, it's a very ugly thing on social media. What you can do is rewrite it for your audience. Um, it takes a team to be ready to launch those birds on and below the flight deck. Um, say who the sailors are, throw their jobs behind them, make it easier to read. Tell them what they're doing, where they're at, and then when. We have a question. Yes. When you're adding vocalizations, you see sometimes, um, I mean, like with your tweet there, you incorporated it into the message, whereas some places put it like a dash at the end, mm -hmm. and then like at a bunch of people that might be referencing that. Right. What, what's your thoughts on that? So the question was, and if, you, if you'll if you go back, you'll see, oh, you can do it here. Um, we linked USS Nimitz, and we made it part of the text instead of just like a dash at the end and then you know, like 10 different ones. Um, again, how would you say it in a conversation? If you were talking to someone and you went, I mean, that's my own personal opinion, and not every time that's gonna work. I don't think that there's a tried and true best way to tag um, in that essence. Um, but the way we try to do it is make it part of that conversation. And you'll see here, again, if you're tagging something, please, please click on it and make sure that it's the official USS Nimitz page. Again, same rules apply. Um, if you can go to the next slide. I have a question on, I agree with rewriting it, especially getting rid of that barren or the vision mm -hmm. number, but um, deleting or not um, including the photographer's name for, for the byline or for the photographer on the mm -hmm. caption, I mean, is that a policy or is that something randomly decided. So for that one, for instance, that one is actually within our blog that we've linked to. So again, we're linking back to official sites and oftentimes, and most of the time, that official site has that auto, uh, the um, photographer within that. But for social media, we typically don't do it. I think the Army does it a little bit differently. Um, and yeah, that's something that we're, we're constantly talking about. It and just photo to credit, I mean, there's a DOD policy. If you were to publish a, a newspaper, that photo mm -hmm. photographer's name is attached photo as it's seen, not do I need to link further to see the photographer's right. name. It's just a standard that I think we're all used to. Yeah. So by omitting it, I don't know, it doesn't it doesn't say official Navy photo to me. Okay. And maybe you could grab it from somewhere else that you're not encouraging that kind of work from the MCs or whoever submitted the contribution. I think, yeah, I think that's a great point and something that is why we like having these conversations. It's something to consider and I think we should absolutely take that back and talk about that and find out, you know. I know, it would be a policy thing. I mean, is there? Yeah, it, there's, with that sort of stuff, 
you're not going to find anything in DOT level policy because it, it quite honestly doesn't exist. Um, doesn't it doesn't mean we couldn't. Make it doesn't mean we couldn't do it. You could have the dash photo by. But the thing you have to remember here is you remember on Twitter and everything else, right. you only have so much there to post content, and then all this information is still in the metadata. Right. And, and so if we click on that photo, that would take us back to Navy.mil or some other official source where that photo is posted, correct? Which, which, which yeah. would be true with the U.S. Navy page, but what we're finding with some of the folks in the fleet, are we not, that, you know, they they want to get all their photos, of course, on Navy.mil, but that's not happening because we, cur we curate our content there as well. So, so what, where would that official source be? I mean, are we saying that we should only post photos that are posted somewhere else already? Are you on a command website um, or something? I think, that's, I think a that's a good rule of thumb, yes. Um, but I think, you know, this sounds like a great Navy Media Tumblr blog that we can write because I think that there's a lot of discussion to be had about this. I think as a photographer, if, if, if my name is associated with that and it's on there, it's a quick, easy way to see how my work is being shared and my home and use and all that. Yeah. Okay. And the Office of Naval Research, on our Facebook page, when we create galleries and so forth or cover photos, the photographer's name is always there. If we want to leave anything off to shorten it, we just right. don't say release. It's assumed that if it's a U.S. Navy photo and it's there, then it's been released. Exactly. Um, so we, we try to use it. We like to try and give people credit. If it's something that we have pulled for, from Navy.mil, like for instance, Fourth of July, um, we have in the past just said it's a U.S. Navy photo, but we'll always try and give the photographer credit. I think our rule of thumb here is that everything that we post on our Facebook page is released imagery from the Navy. Right. Unless otherwise said. Right. Okay. Um, so I think that we can actually take for action to create a Tumblr blog to, to further explore that. I think that's a great conversation to have with the fleet and, and among ourselves. Um, <clears throat> I think that we have some built-in opportunities um, that we need to be looking out for throughout the fleet. Uh, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, some of those things um, are automatically, um, you know, get people buzzing and thinking about the military and the sacrifice of the service. Um, so that's something that we can offer, um, um, capitalize on and push our content out that way as well. So this is just a really simple graphic that we had made that, I mean, it was huge and, and very, very successful and so simple. It was, it's very shareable. I mean, how can you not um, agree to, to share that, that content? One of the highlights of stuff that's being done out there in the fleet that's working out very well, MSC, give a shout out to them. Um, and for two reasons here, um, the hashtag one team, it's consistent across all of their communication efforts. Um, and then the tagging also to really expand the reach of their messaging. And I, and I like to point out, you know, we work really closely with MSC to align our communications and, and to go back and forth on content ideas, and it's a relationship that we would love to have with other commands throughout the fleet in, in order to have that, to be able to pick up the phone and say, hey, I have this really great blog, do you mind sharing it on Twitter? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> so that's a, that's a relationship that we have created with them. Um, that enables us to be better in tune and aligned with their messaging and, and vice versa. The next one up, a photo from the X-47B. Um, kind of what makes this a good post is the future has arrived. Give me some context to it. Um, rather than just posting a link to a article which isn't going to be consumed as well, putting it with a photo yeah. and then giving context to it. I mean, so, he could have been really boring and said, you know, X-47 completed its arrested landing on blah, 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 blah on this day. But instead, he did, you know, three lines of really personable text and a link to, to get that not so much boring story, but that, again, more contextual story. Uh, another shout out to Freedom out there. And again, taking that idea of it's not a Navy.mil caption, it's writing for a different audience and then explaining what's happening. So a member of its boarding team clearing passageway during a boarding drill. So uh, Freedom's doing a good job with social media, explaining what they're doing out there. And then next up, uh, this one here, it's, uh, from Truman. Yeah, it's from Truman, and um, they lost one of their sailors in an automobile accident that day. Um, this is a great example of sometimes you have to, once you open it up and once you're there, you really have to be um, committed to telling that story. And, and they've obviously committed to informing the family about what's going on with their sailors and, and their command. And this is just one example of, you know, it, it was a difficult time and a difficult thing to, to communicate, but they felt it was important. And, and it was. And this is, um, again, they know their audience. 
Um, this is not something that we would we would share on U.S. Navy's page, but it's absolutely a perfect post. So, and again, with George Washington, um, again, fan engagement, they ask people um, to let them know about birthdays, and then they connect uh, sailors to families. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things that they do. I mean, just like really simple backgrounds. They ask the family, you know, give us a week's notice, um, you know, send it to our, our Facebook um, messaging and, and we will, you know, give a shout out for your sailor that you probably haven't seen in months, which I think is really, really nice. So the two things that we want to leave here with are how can we help and how can you help us? The first part is let's have a chat. Uh, let us know what we aren't doing well and let us know how we can help you. And also, when you have content, before you get too far down the rabbit hole on producing it, talk to us about it and make sure it's something that we can use because a lot of times we get content that we um, would like to use, but it's not part of one of our communication priorities. So it may fit better on a different platform, so we have to maybe redirect it to a different area. Yeah, so if the goal of your video is for U.S. Navy to share it or the goal of your video is for thousands of people to see it, uh, we should probably talk about, you know, what have we seen looking at tons of video coming from the fleet and, and again, we've been through this process for years now, what have we seen that works well? Um, we also have a Tumblr blog for best practices and then a closed group on Facebook for uh, basically communication and professional development. Yeah, in the Tumblr blog we share best practices um, and I know that we I mentioned it a couple times here, so please check it out if you need the link. If you just Google Navy Media Tumblr, it'll come up as the first result. And then how can you help, or, or how can we help you? Um, we we want to know what's going on. Um, you know, Jason and I, we have a small team, anywhere we flex from four to five people. Um, it's not enough time to post, produce, and, and, and also scour the fleet and all your wonderful things that you're doing, because you doing great things and oftentimes we stumble upon them but we would like it to be more of a, a two-way conversation in, instead of just oh this is great let's share it now um, we want to be engaged and have that conversation and, and again help help each other create that network effect um, and then communication alignment I think that's huge and, and something that we could we could obviously do better throughout the Navy you know are we all talking about the same thing you know if the sexual assault um, is, a, is a big thing that you know huge thing that we're engaged in we talk about it often um, you know how can we do that better throughout all of our platforms so the public knows and, and realizes how serious we are because it's not just big navy it's you know it's big navy trickling down through all of the commands and all of the sailors and all of the people and all the fleet um, I think that's a really good example of, of how you can look from what we're doing and, and share our content it's so easy to retweet or to share from navy um, don't think you have to recreate the wheel um, absolutely you know steal our stuff and, and use it for your own and you know if it aligns with who you're talking with and, and the message that you want to that you want to be received uh, two things uh, to follow up on that is um, it's a requirement to register your social media um, platform with us uh, it's also a good idea to keep that updated we found that people that are on that directory haven't been there for three or four years so as we try to build a social media community for professional development um, when we go through there, we're finding that people haven't been at that command for quite some time. So make it a best practice as you turn over to go through and say, hey, let's update the directory so Chinfo knows who's running this page. And then also think beyond the Navy.mil story, tell a story. Um, and also with the Navy.mil stories, um, t think visually, make sure it has a photo because there's a lot of great things out there that we'd love to share but we're limited because we don't have that photo. And based on Facebook's algorithms, if we don't have that photo to post with it, we're not gonna be able to reach as many people. Yeah, and just to add to that, I know it's one of CI's priorities in, in conversations with him um, that we that we do think beyond that Navy.mil story. It's not just, okay, I did a Navy.mil and then I'm done. You know, how can we expand that? You know, how can we use that as a tweet? Or are we capturing enough video to make that into a, an all hands piece? Um, and so consider that, and if you want, you know, Again, let's brainstorm how to create this larger story and this network effect through, you know, through sending a tweet to a Facebook post, to a Navy story, to, um, to a historical narrative that's much longer. Does that, and do you, anyone have any questions for us? I know you've asked a lot throughout. Well, Sandy, Jason, thank you. Laura, thank you very much for an excellent presentation.
And uh, thank you folks for uh, being here for this uh, virtual symposium session on the U.S. Navy Emerging Media. For those of you who are here, if you want to see it again, or for the folks who, uh, if you pass it along to folks, uh, they can view it at the uh, livestream.com at the uh, U.S. Navy uh, Professional Development Channel, U.S. Navy PDC. Thank you very much.